our session would be on React on Stack Development. So we're gonna start from the scratch. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, you can see it right Sorry. so since i won't be able to see your messages interact me if you can we can see great so we're gonna start with today today's session would be on full start programming so this is what we we'll learn uh, by the end of the session you can learn how we can, you can create user interface design with Figma. Uh, you will be introduced to React framework for front end development, Tailwind CSS, a normal uh, CSS, uh, including Python programming. Uh, and finally, we're going to see the integration between two. How can you integrate and make sure data is read between that of them? I will show you that. Um, Python connection with MongoDB and Python connection with PostgreSQL. For this session, I'm just going to show you the connection with PostgreSQL. Uh, but I have put reference for MongoDB. You can check that out. So let's start with the designing user interface. So the purpose of user interface, I'm sure you all know uh, what user interface means. Just creating this interactive uh, platform web application or mobile can be to make sure our clients are interacted with what we have done. So the purpose of user interface is that. So to create user interface, uh, there are a lot of softwares out there that the most commonly used are Figma and Adobe XD, but there are of course other popular like InVision, Marvel, G2Truck, there are others. But for this session, we're gonna focus on Figma. Uh, so. Figma is uh, easy, easy, very, it is very easy to use. It doesn't need installation or everything. It's just on a website, figma.com. So you can sign up there and you can have a Figma account. So we can start designing your user interface. So uh, it's usage, I just mentioned common usage of Figma. It is free for everyone. Uh, more than one person can create like, an, like uh, and GitHub we create organization and collaborate, Figma also has that feature. A lot of members can collaborate on a single design. So it gives you that option. It works in, on a computer, but also a website. So it can create uh, the desktop mobile company and applications. So it's really a resourceful application for user interface. So the purpose of using Figma is uh, you have an idea how you can make your user interface or web application. You have an idea in your head how you can make it. Uh, make it so before start coding how you can make. Uh, before start coding your user interface by using React or any other coding language, you first design. This is like a whiteboard. You can draw what you think in your head with Figma or Adobe XD. That is the purpose of these UI UX design tools. So uh, uh, these are different shortcuts you can use on Figma, but now let's just go to the website so I can show you what you can do. So uh, this I already signed up, but for the rest of you, if you go to this link, figma.com, it will give you an option to sign up. So just sign up and after you logged in, you have this option under here files. You can create new design file. It will create for you this new empty board. Then after that, you should go to this part, if you can see it here, frame. In this frame, it gives you different options. Is your design for desktop, for MacBook? It is a different version of MacBook. Or is it for mobile? It can give you these different mobile versions. So for example, if I choose mobile, it will give me a mobile framework that I can just draw anything I want that I personally think 
my, my mobile app should look like. I can draw it by using these different tools here and there. So you can create this frame, give you different kind of frames that you can just practice or you can design your uh, idea on these frames. So for this particular uh, week, say, week project, uh, we're probably going to build a web application, so it should be a desktop. So this is desktop framework. Just creating desktop will create a new dashboard for you. So here, this on this here, this uh, shortcuts that I mentioned are going to be helpful for you when you create your designs here. For example, if you want to uh, zoom out this just you, know, you just have to click control p if you want to reverse which where, where should uh, to the default position you just click shift plus one i already write this up i just uh, put it on the slide thinking it might be useful just comment things that you're gonna use on figma when you design on figma so i uh, created this dashboard uh, as a kind of motivation for you to give you an idea how you should uh, should your web look like, but you can of course use your imagination. So in this series, there's a sidebar that I created. Let me zoom up a little. There is a sidebar, and there is a channel members of users channels with this percentage bar. Uh, this is all created in this Figma, so I'm going to show you how you can create this. Uh, so the first thing you can do is, if you want to change this part, you just have to click on it, so you can change the color here. So when you click here, it will give you the option for, for this. Everything here gives you options to change this background anything you want if you want to make it the right is increase it just gives you option to do that this is you see it because i make the radius 5 to into 2 it change the radius so this is not your mother we want so i'm just gonna reverse the path to zero so you just uh, in this part, you can change the radius of your board. Um, you can change um, this background is white. If you want here, you can change the color of your dashboard, whatever you want. If you, it's black, you can make it black. Since my design that I choose is black, let's make it black here. Okay. So uh, the other thing you need is text. You, if you want to write a text here, what is the tool you're going to use? There's capital T here. Just have to click it here and just click here. That's it. So just write everything you want. Slack message. If you want to duplicate this part, this code, if you just click shift and just drop it like this. Drop it like this. You can do many duplications like this. Just click Shift Alt and drag the element you want to duplicate. So you can move around anything you want here. Uh, what is this? No, here. Yeah. Now, for if you want to create a side by tree like this one, all you have to do is this is a shape option. There is there's an option, a shape option. There's a line. There's an arrow, polygon, star. So we're going to click the, the rectangle, just hold it at one place and just drag it and stop with stop. This is it. Then we create this sidebar. If you want to change its color, again, we just have to click it and this option will come. This is the color right now. Now we just have to click change it to any color you want. Okay. Now let's say uh, what the next step we have to do is uh, if you want to create a components 
above this sidebar. Icons, if you see them, there's icon options here. So Figma give you an icon to add icons. So this section, if you see it here, there is a plugin option here when you click this part. So just write icon. Iconify, this is where Figma will give you different options of icons. Now, uh, choose anything you want. I want to click home, just home icon. There is home, different kinds of home, just pick your choice. And if you want to increase the size of the home, there's a height. You can change the header, and if you want to change the image, uh, the color of the icon, you have the option to do that. Then you just drag it here and put it here. Uh, okay. Scroll it here. Then you can drag this part here and put it here. You can increase the size with this groups right there uh, another you can put a text here right you can show it and put oh. if you want to, to edit the whole font everything you want again you will click it and you will come to the right side of the big dashboard and it will give you, if you want to make it on center or on the left, you have to select the text to change, to see the changes. So uh, the center. Now let's just change the color if you want. We'll change it. The text, these are options to change. If you want to increase the font size, you can do this. I think it's easy once you get the hang of it. So. I don't have to repeat this. This is the same process. Just select an icon from this plugins. Same thing from Iconify and just uh, choose this icon and repeat the same process. This part also is an icon. Now let me just show you how you can draw a chart in Figma since most of our app for this week will be chart. and it will give you different options. There's a line chart, scatter chart, area chart. Here, our chart, it will show you a preview. So you can choose anything you want. So this, for example, to make it similar to the design I created here, uh, let's choose a line chart. And if, we, if there's only one, of line you if you want only that you just can make it one then you can just make it one change uh that of points if you want the point had the, the, the dots here the grid if you want can, uh, hide the grid and if you want to decrease the number of the horizontal parts of the graph you can place it here it will give you an option just to do anything you, uh, you want so, Let's put it on area here. Okay. Just to make it similar with, then just click our chart. Shift plus one. Now just this one. When you select like this and click Control G, it will group the data together. So if I didn't do that, this is. See, it will separate the chart from the graph X, Y, Z line. So for that not to happen to you, you all you have to do is just select everything together and click Control G. It will group it. So when you move it, it will move together. It's uh, one thing you have to know if you, you have to know how to group things. You can so you can move them together components. 
for example here let me just increase the size you want to if i want to move this much here you see because i grouped it i can just move it around as much as i want by same mechanism by control g i have grouped each component that you see inside this dialog box Okay, this graph needs to be similar to the, this one. There is a background with different color. So to implement that, all you have to do is, all you have to do is click the rectangle part here, or eight rectangle, sorry. A rectangle box uh, give it a radius of maybe 30 just to give it a curve look here uh, change the color if you want yes then now you can move so you can move So you guys were hearing me this whole time or was I disconnected? Yeah, we are hearing you. So I think it's clear how you can, uh, the purpose of Figma just to give you, uh, to give yourself a, pl a place or a paper to, to design what you think that you should be. So not to waste time, let's just go to the React part. Uh, this is the purpose of uh, this is the per the first thing full stack developers do especially front end developers they uh, put their ideas what the web should look like on figma or xd or any other softwares that can accept ui ux design and that's just implemented here and the great part of figma is so when, when i go when we go to the react part for example you, you see this color right so i just can take this color this part just paste it on the front end part of my code i'll show you how we can do that so this just gives you this the padding the distance between this side and this side figma make it wait this is happening because i didn't group group it so if like i told you before if i just take this part out sometimes just stop, get stuck. So let's just put it here on fine. Uh, 
ontology is a group that Ontology again, so I can move it together. Okay, so So this uh, this is the purpose of Figma. You can create everything here. So when you go back to the front end part of the coding, you can take the elements, the text. Of, you can decide everything here: the font type, the text size, every the color. And when you start coding with React or any uh, framework, front end framework, you just have to copy the values you already set here and just paste it there. So it will make your job as a front for the front end part of your application much easier because you will finish most of the designing part here at Figma. So I hope this is clear. So I'm gonna move to React. If you have a question here, you are welcome to ask. Okay Ezra, you can you can talk. Yeah I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, so Figma is a it's like a mock-up design or what? To visualize the things. Yeah, it's like react. yeah, it's it's uh, it's like a drawing board for you to visualize your ideas in. You can create everything here. What you visualize, you up should be. You can decide the font, the color, because these are very important when you want to create professionally an interactive web application. So you can decide the main parts here, and especially when you are in company in the development in the, the development part of uh, working experience, you just first have to make sure everything is being cleared with your teams or clients here in the Figma before starting to the coding part. Just not to waste time. So it's really very useful when you, you come to the business world in development. Okay, so it's like a mock-up design. Yeah, it's a, it's like a mock-up design where co uh, teams or developers can just be agreed on the interface of your web app. It's like a mock-up. It's a drawing board. You can say it like that. Okay, okay. Thank you. So anyone? Before we go to React. So I have put a lot of references on Figma also, so you can check that out if you want to perfect this as an experience. Um, and this Figma, you can share it like we share our documents, you can share it and everyone can see your product. Uh, if you also add teams, everyone can also collaborate on your design. It's really useful software. There is a lot of references here on Figma. You can check that out. Now let's go to React. Now let's just consider there is a framework that you are design, you think of, and you want to implement it in coding. So you can make a connection with backend development and just have a fully working application. So there are a lot of front end frameworks from React to Vue, Angular. There are a lot, but React is the most commonly famous, the other sort of famous because React mostly is used. So why why do we choose React? React has a lot of reusable components. The components, we can build them over and over again. So that has the potential for that. It can build a rich user interfaces. And React has a lot of packets, additional packets we can use uh, by embedding with our React framework. And it is easy to learn. So the React. If you want to learn more about React, this is the React 
documentation, you can refer that. Now we just go to the installation part. There is two ways. There are a lot of ways to install React, but there is this way from the documentation, how you can install React in your app. And there is this another way of uh, installing React with white. This the format, the documentation React installation takes a lot of uh, place in your computer. It's really, it has a lot of files. So I mostly don't use it. So I'm going to just recommend you to use this write. It is fast in the installation fast. Uh, when you run the app, it's fast. This one just take take a minute to, to install or even to run the application. So we're going to use this part as an, for this session, but you're welcome to use both. The, in the output, it's the same. So let's copy this, and we're going to create a new React app. And we're going to go from there before Okay, let's just create. Yeah, I'm gonna create new folder. Let's call it. CD reacts is to be inside this folder. Now we're gonna paste the code on the slide. It will give you byte has different uh, frameworks inside it. So you can either uh, install the vanilla framework, the view, uh, the React. There have it has a lot of options uh, byte, but we're gonna focus on the React. So we you just click the download arrow and click on React. Uh, if you are comfortable with TypeScript. Just type, type script, and if you are comfortable with JavaScript, choose JavaScript. I'm going to choose JavaScript. It, that's it. It finishes the installation that quickly with Y. If you test it with the first installation, it takes time. So that's why I like Y. So now if you click open the React folder under okay, create Y project. I'm gonna move it here. I should have so now it gives you an instruction CD white project. It creates the uh, React files under the white project uh, folder. So just create white project just to be in that folder and just now in the install to install any dependencies. See, while that install, let's go back to the slide. And this is Tailwind CSS. The, you can, this, the purpose of Tailwind CSS is to style your application, your React components. So you have two options for styling. You either can use the normal CSS uh, course or you can use Tailwind. So in this session, I want to teach you how to use Tailwind. Mostly CSS is uh, the commonly known with uh, styling web application, but Tailwind is also a very useful way of uh, doing styling your app. They are the CSS and Tailwind CSS are similar, the way they are written are different. The, the concept behind both of them is the same. So it's, it's the building process with Tailwind is more faster than CSS. So it's my personal favorite. So I'm going to show you how we can install it in our React app, Tailwind, and how we're going to use it. So this is the installation code for Tailwind. Uh, I have put references for both React and Tailwind uh, and also CSS. You have to learn CSS even to understand Tailwind. So for beginner, I have put CSS coding. Uh, CC. So let's just go back to the React part. Okay. Installation is fun. Then now in PM, run dev. This code in PM install, in PM run dev. Once you finish the installation of React, it will give you what to do. So just follow this. But anything, just run it. 
it will give you a route so just follow the link and see the default react app this is a default draft app what it should look like but we're going to draw our own uh, way up so what we're going to going to do is first list uh, okay no this is uh, the the new form or the new created react component it is uh, in the modules uh, packets the public where you can put your image everything image related things you mostly put it on the public folder and this is the src where the main app is found so this this part is found this code is found inside this component up to js this is the root component in react app technically the root component is uh, in this html but the uh, upper component is called in the index component so it automatically when you open any app any react app the first component that is going to be rendered is the app to jx so other components we're going to create will will run based on if app run it's just this this uh, component is the main component up to jsx this is the uh, one component and every component will it's like the children of this is a parent component in react or, or in view the rest of the components that we're going to be creating are the children for this app everything so i'm just going to show you what i'm saying i think i'm confusing you so before we just gonna we before we start talking about uh, react basics uh, i'm going to show you what is the difference between tailwind and css in our app so currently the react the initial default react app is using css so if you see it, this is CSS code. Just different styling mechanisms, uh, taking the weeds, the margin, the padding, takes the line where it should be, should be in the center or left. This is a basic CSS uh, I mean course. So if you are familiar with CSS, it won't be new. So if you are not, please refer to the reference. You have to understand these some things how to give height um, this one is for is given for the logo image the height should be this the party should be this the transition should be this to just give it some kind of duration wing uh, just to make it more stylish so this there's a lot of things in css so so how this is used in the app to jss here this is a, a css file is being called here by importing so how the these two understand each other is there is a class name in React where we put the class name for our component. Now, if you see this part, this is one container where it contains a button and an edit. You see, right plus React, there's a button and there's an edit. If we see it on the part, this one, this is the button count is zero and white plus react is, is this component here so if we change how this button get this kind of styling is because of the css given to it in up to css so if you see there's a name called card here so when we import up to css the first thing up to css look in this component is if there is a component card card if there's a component card there's already written a style for for the card class name here see class name card padding 2 am so for you to see the change let's just make the background color for the better we give it a color let's say this now we must see the change here on the card I hope it's clear. So every, you have to be, just give it a name on the class name and put the class name here and just write any class CSS style you want and you will see it's the change in your application. That is the purpose of CSS. You can, uh, and if I want to give it a border radius, you can give it this. Because low number we cannot see the change but 
See this curved border is like the Figma part. I showed you indeed on CSS here also. So this is the purpose of CSS. So uh, if you decide to use CSS in your application, what you have to do is you have to call the CSS uh, component here and just give the component you want to give style a name and make sure that name is also found in the CSS and it has styling CSS components. That's, it. That's how CSS work. Now, this kind of styling can be done also by Tailwind CSS. So to show you how Tailwind works, first, let's just install Tailwind first. Tailwind has to be installed in our new React application. Let's go back to the slide. The installation is simple. All you have to do is just copy this part. Start and just initialize the tailwind here. And when we initialize the tailwind, two files will be created, tailwind input CSS. Yeah. Post CSS and tailwind CSS will be created here. So if you go back to the tailwind documentation, Post CSS, what the post CSS.config JSS should include, it's clearly shown on the document. So just follow the recommend and make sure you put the Tailwind and post CSS files if they are not included. But mostly when you install uh, this command, the last command, it will put it by default. Yeah. So for the Tailwind to work, uh, there's one, sorry, there's one thing we have to put in the index CSS, this part. Include Tailwind in your CSS, which means the React App general OK, this one. There's more descriptive value. Anyway, you have to put you uh, you have to put it in your on your general uh, React CSS file, this part, you have to copy it from here and paste it in your general uh, index CSS. So for React app, the general index CSS is this one. And for next uh, app, I don't know if you don't, if you know it, there is a CSS file named global.css. For, for the React, this is index CSS is the general CSS. So you have to put this one. This, with this one in this part and the other thing you have to do is in the tailwind CSS here you have to give it a condition like this we'll copy it here sorry the purpose of this is we are telling Tailwind to be applied in every folder, in every component under SRS, which means this folder. If you don't tell this command to Tailwind, it will not understand it. Any Tailwind CSS you, you implement on your component, it won't be visible. So you have to make sure this kind of command is put on the tailwind.config.js. Uh, and index.html, you will answer in entirety here. This is the main component, the main part in, in React. So, which everything is rendered because this index.html exists. So, make uh, adding in the index.html in the tailwind.config CSS will command ta uh, tailwind to be applied in every component that will be created under this project, under the vice project. So now let's see the changes. If Tailwind is installed, the command has to be has to work. So let's just delete this part. Create a new header one. Um slack or slack. 
have an analysis. Now our dashboard is changed. Okay, since I terminate the connection here, I have to return. I have to run it again. Back analysis because I do, I do like uh, now let's ma let's make it the color red with tailwind. All you have to do with tailwind is you don't have to create another component like up to CSS to create. All you have to do is here on the H1 dot write the class name and take it dot red dot eleven hundred. This is still with way of doing CSS command. Now, if you go back to here, and refresh it, and you see it, it's like this, is, it's random. So instead of just creating another component and just making your application more complex, Tailwind is easy. You can do any of the CSS changes here. So if you see it here, if you notice, let's say that make, let's make the background yellow. If you see it here, when I click BG yellow, it gives me different options of the color Tailwind has. We are seeing this option because I already installed a VS Code extension for Tailwind. So just, uh, I'm gonna show you the extension. You have to install it in your VS Code, just follow, you know. This one I already installed this installation because uh, extension uh, because of this is why when I just write the first part of the text the Tailwind CSS format it just show me the different options that I have here I just have to scroll down it just where I want. if I want to increase the font size I have this option by Excel if you see it it can increase this, like this. So make sure you install this extension. And for also for React, React also has an extension in this approach. This, this React, no, this one, this one. Xmax, Xmax 37, React Redux, React Native Snippet. This is also a useful uh, extension to have if you want to build React on your basic code. Uh, additionally, another extension I want you to add is standards. Okay, I'll show you this part later. It's okay. So this this extension, what it can do for you is, for example, let's create a new component. First, the professional way of doing React is organizing your folder. So I'm just going to give you some trick how you can do that. Just create a components folder to put your components and create a page folder to put your page. Pages. These are the routing page, and this will be the helper components. Uh, don't worry about it too much, but this is usually how uh, the format of React application looks like. There's a component folder, a page folder. So now let's say we, we want to create a component, a new component name, maybe okay, for the components, let's create a page. Uh, let's say we want to create a page name home dot uh, When you write a React co component, it's advisable to start with capital letter. It's just some uh, uh, usually then thing I want you uh, I want you to know usually page or component are written the first letter is reduced capital letter so home dot j6 now as you can see the component is empty so either you can just write this course one by one like this to for the home component and but since we uh, uh, install the react extension if you write r a f t e it will give you and if you click it see this is happening because of the extension it will drive you the normal the standardized component 
structure for React components. This is how React components are structured. There's their name and there's the return function. Everything you have, you written, every code, every element, every button you, you written has to be written under this return part. This is the rendering part. So this format, instead of writing one by one by writing RFCE, the extension will drive the rest and just have to enter and it will give you this structure. So let's now create another component analytics. Analysis, sorry, analysis. You can name it anything you want here. And you can do the same thing, R A C, then it will give you an arrow function or normal arrow function. Either one can do the job, so just R A C E and J. Now you learn how you organize your React application. Uh, the next thing he, that you should know is how to make sure uh, routing works. For example, if I want to route, this is the home page. If I want to route to the analysis page, this page, this analysis page, For home, if you want to output on our page this this node analysis to be started, I want to this page in my router. So if I put this route like here, like this. I'm not gonna see anything. It's still the home page that I'm seeing. This is happening because we didn't set up our routing in our application, in our React. Yeah, so to make sure right routing work, so you can just move around between different pages. All you have to do is install this package. This npm install React Router DOM or I can share you the NPM pack. No, this is, uh, it's okay. Uh, mm. So we just have to install this. And if you don't get the installation for this, I guess you can ask me on the Slack or I can share it here. So let's just install this package to make sure we to render every component as much as we want. So to save time, I think we are losing time. I'm just gonna go to already built. This is already uh, set up this part, this React code. So uh, if I, uh, let's just see it from here since a lot of time is going by. So uh, this application, this front end folder already has a DOM, a React DOM. So every route can be, is working fine. So the first thing, the first thing you have to do is after installing the React DOM is make sure your main.jsx, this part, is put it like this. You have to code the React DOM. This main .jx is also another component on React that handle this app. This app is running because it's called in the main .js app. This app, is, you see, this component app is called from here, import app, which means this. So we have to wrap this entire app under the browser router. If we wrap it like this now, we can call any page from here and it will display this particular component. So for to make sure this analytics is running, let's say copy, sorry. 
copy in the abdojx says everything is data so in abdojx is called here and it's wrapped under the router drop and up to up to j dot jsx and this part is calling this another component the page component the component component can be called here so what i did here is this is a uh, route routes use location this functionalities come from this package the, the package we already installed so by wrapping this around and give it a pass i can name it here anything i want anything if i uh, write uh, on my browser slash any the component that will be displayed would be the analytics component the analytics component is this one so in the case this is the analytics component it is one analytics one now if you go to this part this is uh, this is uh, an already built web application if i any you see analytics one the routing is working so this is the setup here for the routing any component you want to have a route pass just add it here create it either in the page or on the component just call it import analytics import home from this or if it's in the component folder import that component name from this and just give it a pass and put the component name under the element tag and it will be displayed because so this is how routing works in React with framework. So the other important package you should know for your application is this one, React chart. This package will help you to draw any chart, any chart based on the data you gonna put you you will you will put on your MongoDB or SQL package. So we are gonna see that. These graphs are built with ChartJSTS package. Right now, they are, the, the, the data they are getting is static. So when you connect your React app with the Python, with the backend framework, and with your MongoDB, these data will be dynamical because they will be fetched from your uh, database. So I'm just putting it here to show you what ReactJS module this can do for you. So I'm just going to show you the code here. I'm going to call the home component. Because why I'm showing you the home component? Because in the app is the home component is running under slash, which means the local host. The first part that uh, when the app is running, the first component that will be run is the home. So this component is found under the home page. So this is the home component, which contains all the React chart and everything. So this is BGLO 300. It's the table that That's why the background is yellow. And this chart, it's a pie chart, and this is a bar chart. Uh, after you install the React uh, chart, after you install the package that I gave you, I have put the bar chart and the pie chart here. Oh, these are components are like uh, reusable components that you can use everywhere. And the components here are not, I didn't put them on a route. These are page. The, their purpose is to be, to be used in any page I want. So the the when you want to create a reusable code just put it in the component folder folder and just by importing that particular component you can use it anywhere repeatedly as much as you want so first i put the bar chart in the pie chart codes here so the by this props is the way we transfer data from one component to another so this props i will show you the data is coming from this home page because I call bar, bar chart here, you see it? This is a probe data, which means I'm transferring a data from the home component to the bar component. 
getting, if you see it here, I, I pass a char data, right? So I'm getting the partial, the char data using these props. So it's now, if you are new, it, will, it can be overwhelming, but you will get the hang of it if you just keep uh, understanding it. So uh, the other thing, the major thing you have to know in React is this part, use effect and use state. These are very important functionalities React have. Use effect, the purpose of use effect is once you write use effect in your component, every time you refresh your page, this use effect run immediately. So anytime you want to fetch a data when uh, your React component refresh, you can put it under use effect. So this is, like I told you, a working React app. I have already connected it with a Flask Python bug backend. So I'll show you how I did that, but for now, what I want is every time the use effect or every time the component is rendered, I want my React, my front end app to fetch a data from my backend. So I'm calling this fetch events function. This fetch function is calling a backend. This is another port. This is the backend port or URL, this URL. So every time my React app is a uh, no, React component, which means the home component is re rendered this page event will be called and it will fetch data for me from my backend and my backend is connected to this Postgres basically. So, which means I'm getting the data in my front end. So, for, okay. So I'm gonna show you now the backend so you will have the hang of what I'm talking about here. So let's now, let's just move to the backend part. Uh, if you can see it here, I already set up my Postgres SQL. I have created a table. This is my database work. There is one table that I created for a sample. Table event, it has three columns here. Description, I created at the moment I did upload a data here, it will automatically save the data and that's primary keys or IDs are uh, generated automatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this uh, Postgres database with our uh, Python uh, backend and we make sure we read this file in our front end. Okay. So now let's just go back to the front end part, the backend. Since I already set up, set it up, I'm just gonna show you the slide part here and you just make the installation by yourself. Okay. For the backing, we have uh, this is just we are for the backing or or the front end uh, to work for the backing, especially the Python has to be installed on your computer, and for a framework to work, Node.js has to be installed. The package has to be installed on your computers, but most of you have this package installed. So let's just move on to the next part. So we have two options doing uh, that, making sure our Python, uh, our backend is Python. There could be a lot, but for now, I'm just showing you how you can create your backend using Python through Flask or Django. You can do both ways you can either make it your backend with django whichever you choose or flask both are python frameworks frameworks uh, which has uh, rich resources in them so you can you can be free which one you choose as your backend so for this session i'm going to show you how we can use flask to create our backend to make a connection with postgres sql so to create your flask just create a folder Flask is a web framework to build applications. So the first thing you need to do to create your backend is with Flask is just create a folder and under the folder, uh, do this pip install pip inf this command. The purpose of pip inf is just to give you uh, it's like a package.json in Node.js or React. The package.json is where most of our dependencies are found, right? In our application, this pip.inf also pip.inf also give Flask uh, backing to uh, to make sure to make sure every dependencies on the project is saved in that. So this is an important 
command to make on our flag. So make sure you install this. Then just click pip in the dos shell. After you do that, when you do this, it will give you. Okay, let me show you again here. When you pip after this command, after you run this command, it in the shell. It in shell. Shell. When you write, run this code. Uh, this one, it, it is showing me for, for, for me this one because I already activated in my VS code. But for you, the first thing, the, after the first installation, what it gives you is this part, this pass. It will give you your shell is under this pass. So you make sure you copy that and Control Shift P. When you click this, you will find this and make sure you Python selector interpreter. Save this. When you click this one, it will give you which path you want to make your shell in. So when you run this command, since it gave you this, make sure you copy this path and click inter interpreter path and click this. Then it will activate the shell in your Flask project. Okay, so don't forget this part of the process. After making sure the environment is correct, uh, install these dependencies: Flask, Flask, SQL Alchemy, uh, .inv, Course. These are important. Just install them. Every install you make in under your Flux folder, you have to start with pip inv. Just make sure. So since I already started, I'm not gonna install it again. And finally, to run your backend, Flask run. This is the final command. Flask run. When you do this, it will give you a port. This HTTP 5000. This port, if you remember this yeah, this is on the react wave frame uh, the thing that i put here is this port the backend port so i can make an integration between my react and my backend so and to make sure this uh, my front it read this port i'm going to use this package axios make sure you install it if you decide to use react for the project this axios it will be the one that can create the connection between our front end and our back end through this URL, our back end URL. Okay. Now let's see the back end code. The back end code, this is the back end folder. I have only one up to py. Every dependency is found here. Everything that I install here is found here, like package.json. So this is a CRUD application. Uh, it's a working back end. You can insert, delete, edit, update data in this uh, backend code. It's a simple code, just as a, as a sample. So uh, I show you, I have showed you this part. I've created a table event. I didn't create this event uh, by coming manually in post SQL. I created it from this uh, backend side. So I have put it the class event uh, here. I have three components I listed. The components of the table. I have ID, description, created ID. Uh, this part of the code shows you to automatically assign date, the, the date right now. So the only thing you have to pass for the backend is the description output. Uh, the primary key also automatically will be assigned by Postgres SQL, so you don't have to do that. So this is the part where the table creation is happening. Uh, this is for and up to the route is where you give your REST API or your backend a route. So uh, from the front end, if they access the slash, they will get the value here. If they access from the home page, in this one slash events will give the front end an access to the database to, sorry, where was it? To insert a description data on the database, the slash events a get request and this one is for single request. This will get the whole data and this one will delete and this one will update. So I'm gonna show you how you can take this out. So 
uh, there is an extension tender client. Think tender tender client. Yeah, this is also another uh, basic code extension. You can right. It's like Postman. It's like Postman. If you know Postman, so you can think you Postman is React. You can replace every route you created here on your Postman or tender client. So make sure you install it. So once you install it, the installation icon will come here. So we sh you can create any request, new request. And you can put the banking route. OK, banking route. Here, for example, let's start from our banking code to fetch our events. The already saved file from all files from here slash events it gets the data all the data in our database and the, the table event will be fished in this request so before i've shown you that i have to show you how you can connect your flask with postgres sql so this is a simple thing you have to do you you call this sql alchemy the package you installed before in, in installed here already mentioned in the installation part this part you collect that this from this package you found this sql alchemy component so you just call it to connect it with your postgres sql so all you have to do is find this part from your postgres sql this is the format how you call your Postgres SQL database. So this is the name of the Postgres SQL. This is the username for my database. When I install it, it is stated like this. And this is the password I give of localhost slash Slack. Slack is the database I created. This one is simple. You just this is Slack. So. I assigned everything. This is how you do it. So for your first Grace SQL, make sure you change your database name, your password, your username, and this one will be the same. So I have, uh, this is how you configure it to connect your Flux database, batching database with your Postgres SQL. And uh, after you did that, so how you insert data to your database would be, you come to your terminal while you are in the back end. So let's, okay, let's just break another one. You make sure you are on your back end folder. Now all you have to do is write Python. When you write Python, after you uh, make sure you have set everything to connect with your database. So But since I already created event, it won't show you a new uh, table created. Maybe it can. Maybe let's trick this one to show you how to create a new table. Okay, let's call this table uh, Slack. Or this something. It has or channel. Let's make channel. The input we're going to put is channel name. Okay. Now, to make sure this table is also inserted in your Postgres SQL, so this is. I have put this DB. If you see this DB uh, name variable is found from this. This DB is reading the database. I have assigned this app to the DB. So when you call this part, it will immediately connect to you with your SQL database. So the first thing you have to do is from app report. I'm just calling my app module here. So then you have to do is 
seems to be in the print off. I forgot this command here. This command that I'm writing is just to insert any table to our database. Um, I don't know if it is happening, it worked before, so just, just leave it for now as it is. Let's just show you with uh, the already created table here. I'll see to it, I know. Uh, from the events, uh, this Postgres table here. These two uh, data has to come out when I click this, get me from the events. I'm asking it according to this code I put it here, this part. This part is doing, it fits the data from the database, from the event table. So if you click it here, this is the data will come. Uh, for example, if you want to add another uh, data to the table, all you have to do is post. Make sure the route is uh, similar with the back end route you put here. The post is slash event only. There is no S. So make sure the body is here. And the body writes. Slug. Send. The new cry with new ID will be created, and if I refresh my post across SQL, I will see the new change. This one, black messaging two, I already deleted it before, that's why it's not included here. So, if I okay, so I think you get the purpose, the idea. So, uh, you can test this part, everything is it, it works. The delete the event works. So, all you have to do is to create a full stack, you just have to uh, call this route the backing route, this one on your front it through Exeos and you can access these values, the slash event, the slash event, slash ID, every one of them and just can do anything you want. So for where the home here. So for as an example, I have showed you here how to uh, fetch all the data on from in our database from our front end. So if I go back, just show you from our home page under inspect okay. 
let's refresh it. Just remember when you create the component every time, this use effect will render and call this fetch event. And the fetch events will uh, through Axios will fetch our database and call this route. And uh, I'm in the console log under the data name, data or the response. You will see the fetch event from the database. So we have to see the new fish data. So re re refresh it here, response to data. How are you doing? The first is already exist one, and this one's like messaging, the new one that I created using the sender client. So once you have found this data, cons consider in your project, you have these data frames that you put in your database. You can give you the data in your front end and make sure you apply those data on your graphs. The, the graphs accept value here. This is um, the bar graph, and I just give the statistical data, but now you can use the data that you get from your database. You can put it here dynamically, so every time you upfront, you can create a bar chart or any chart you want. So, sorry for taking too long, it's just, uh, and the Django, uh, the same thing, it, it can do the same thing as class, it's just different framework. So if you prefer, uh, prefer that, uh, this is how you install it, and there is uh, references how you can do it. So this is full stop development, the connection between from front end, the whole process to the back end, fetching data between each other. This is called full stop uh, development. This is the whole uh, idea be behind full stop. This Rapt, Mongo, these are different frameworks, uh, the connection of both back in front end uh, frameworks here. So, uh, this, uh, this is what full stack development means, how it should be. So, thank you. If you have a question, sorry for. I hope it's clear. Any questions? Okay, there, there it. Okay, uh, thank you, Ahmad. It's very interesting uh, topic and uh, nice present, nice uh, demonstration for us. Uh, but I have one uh, question regarding to Plask in Django. I have a beginner beginner experience on Plask uh, on uh, with some other cloud computing infrastructures, but uh, when it comes to Django. Uh, there is a lot of libraries on Django, but we uh, like I have seen also your experiences on Flask. Whereas, what do you think about? I'm going on uh, use Django, uh, so what do you recommend? Like, uh, it's better to uh, move Flask uh, uh, to Django or Flask is better? So, uh, can I answer you that on the Slack right? Because uh, I can't say I have that much experience on both of them to give you. Uh, you know, a knowledgeable answer for the question since you need it for professional purpose. So uh, I have people that are more experienced in this area, so it's better to give you more educated answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Uh, Daniel, uh, like I told you in the morning. It is interchangeable. You, are, you can either use Streamlit or React. It's a preference. If you are comfortable with React, you can still get the same uh, framework, uh, user interface framework to show your work. And Streamlit can be the same purpose with Python. Uh, so it's just a preference. It's not only React, they are Vue, Angular. They, they can do the same thing React can do. It just uh, developer, developers reference which are they comfortable in. So Streamlit is totally uh, fully Python. React is JavaScript or it can be TypeScript. Uh, so it's your preference, okay? Daniel, I hope it's clear. Uh, David, uh, Django is better if you see it on the message. Uh, I think maybe he has experience in it, he's telling you that. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, some of researchers or some of uh, developers say that Django is <coughs> better than that of 
yeah. last framework. I don't know, uh, I don't have the further, uh, such uh, further knowledge about uh, Django, but they suggest us like uh, Django is more yeah. uh, like Django, what I know, yeah, Django is like more like a framework, a big framework. It has a lot of uh, structure is from where I heard and from a lot of experience I have. It's more organized and yeah, a lot of people recommended it. So, it's Okay, I hope Daniel, uh, you gave my answer. Okay, thank you. I'm using Django, the best than Django. Okay, another person prefer Flask, so just experience goes and decide it, I guess. Uh, another question, especially the ladies, please ask. Anyone? Is it clear in no confusion? The content. So, uh, to answer questions on the chat. Uh, way dif different from Streamlit. Yeah, the way they uh, give the final product is different. This React in Streamlit is, is, is really different. The, the final output can be similar, but the way you go about it is different. So uh, we, I would advise you to, as a developer for the future, for this week project, I think Streamlit can be more easier. So you can use that, but for as a developer for the future, experiencing it all of them and just deciding what's best for you is better the way they go but some of them are conflict some of them are easy some of them different different languages you're not comfortable with so just try to use this opportunity to learn both and decide which space for you for the project you can either choose the streamlit or react react with some back, back end. I don't think it's uh, required to use both. Just uh, you have a little uh, two days, right, to finish up. So just choose one of them and do that. Uh, Flutter, I guess you can do that, uh, Melat. I will ask with that in Steam. Yeah, we, the thing is, we want you to learn how do, to use React also because React is also mostly used. So. Uh, we recommend you to learn it, even though you know how to use Flutter. Uh, so I would advise you for this uh, project to use either Streamlit or Flutter. As it. Since it's a learning process, you can do that, but uh, it's okay if you use Flutter also. But I would recommend it if you use one of that, okay? Uh, so I want to know the Okay, uh, for ReactJS to, to run it, like I said before, there are two ways to install it. And each installation, there's either you can run, it will guide you, the installation will guide you. Run the project with, it can say you either with npm run dev or npm start. So when you install it, you will see uh, the command Okay, Nokia. The installation will give you which command to use. Yes, if you use Streamlit, you don't need a separate backend. Just, uh, I think there's an option for Streamlit to connect with SQL or uh, database. So you don't need Flask or Django with Streamlit. Just uh, Streamly can be connected directly with the database. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ramat again. Okay, it's okay. Uh, can you develop like a uh, front end application by using Streamlight independently without any uh, integration with other databases like Django and MySQL? Uh, 
हेलो हेलो सॉरी इंडिपेन्डेंटली <laughs> Yeah, I think Flask has uh, an option, a template to create its own web uh, user interface. Has a template Flask. Django also has one, I think. So you can you can connect these two with your database, like I showed you before for the Flask, and you can just access a database through its username or and password. As for Streamlit and this. Plus, in Django, will create for you this URL, the REST APIs you can use with uh, another additional framework. Okay. Okay. Thank But you. Indeed, has its own code, its own instruction code to connect directly with uh, a SQL database or others. So, okay. uh, Alexander. Okay, Brahan. I don't know which one of you were the first. Okay. Should I press it? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not a question, but if, if you can share the um, the files for the React uh, and also for the uh, Flask part that you have uh, demonstrated, it would be a great help because we don't have much of the time. And then uh, starting off from the scratch might take a lot of time, and I have no experience with. Flask, frankly, so it would be a great help if you can share the, those files. Okay, thank you. I will share it in the code. I will push it on GitHub and uh, share it with the GitHub link. Okay. And um, thank you. Who is Alexander? Okay, Alexander, you can continue. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have no question. I have suggestion. I want okay, to give you. suggestion about uh, Django and Flask uh, that have number of questions raised before. Okay. I have seen one paper that states the uh, debate between which framework of Python is uh, meaningless now at time. Uh, mm -hmm. Python has many number of frameworks, but the debate between which framework is more uh, preferable is meaningless. Uh, Meaning that mastering one framework uh, that has more marketable and that contain many functionalities. Uh, for example, when you see Django, uh, Django is more efficient uh, code structure, contains many number of modules. Uh, even one writer said that about uh, Django, uh, Django, we can say that Django contains number of flasks uh, in it. So, uh, Meaning that when we compare Django and Flask, uh, Flask is we see as one function, one module of Django. So Django is more uh, preferable. Uh, sometimes some people uh, also say that mastering only is their preferred one is good. In my view, uh, Django is uh, more marketable, more efficient, and it contains number of modules with uh, efficient code structure. So uh, this is my suggestion about the questions that arise before. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you have any questions, please ask.
Milke has also shared his opinion. Okay. Uh, if you have any question, I guess we can finalize our today session and you guys can go back to your project. Okay, uh, before we close, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, so, some updates about the on brain grading. Uh, please go to your 10x platform. Uh, let me check. And then you will find uh, under the submissions for today, you will find uh, somewhere we can be five ideas to change the word resubmission. That's why you will submit your work. So go there, see the grading, see how much you scored, see the feedback you received. If you receive the hundred percent, then you are good. You don't need to do the resubmission. But if you do receive a hundred percent and you have some feedbacks of what you should be improving on, please work on them and make sure that you're submitting uh, your work before tomorrow 8 p.m. UTC. I hope that is clear. Is it clear? Can I, can I get some thumbs up? Is it clear? No. Just let us know if it's clear. It's I think clear. It, 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 Yeah, one thing. I don't hear you clearly. Can you want to keep it Let me move on a bit. Okay, could you repeat them for, for them? Maybe? Yeah, I hope you can hear me now. I will repeat it again because um, yeah, I will get you if and write it on Slack, but since you're all here, let me say it here out loud. So the grading for the ideas to change the world has been completed. So please head to your 10X account mm -hmm. and make sure that you are reviewing how much you scored on the project see um, if you received 100%, then you don't need to do any resubmission. But you, if you didn't receive 100%, please go check how much you got and the feedback you have, like what you should be improving on, and then redo your work and make sure that you submit your, um, your, uh, your clear, like your final work uh, by tomorrow 8 p.m. UTC. So just head there under notification, you will see everything about the, 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 the work that you've done on ideas to change the world. Some people didn't grant, grant us access, so we didn't grade you. So please head there and make sure, um, make sure that you do give us access. Okay, Lami, it's clear. Okay, um, then make this. I got only comments and no grades. Can you check if, can you check what kind of comments you received? And then we work on that. I'm going to check your account as well, see why you didn't get any grades. But yeah, to the people who we didn't grade, just know that there is something wrong with your document. Probably the document is not there or you didn't give us access to view your document. And then uh, additional information. Okay, I'm going to be, Fanuel said, same here, Pascalino, Grace, just feedback about the presentation. Okay, I'm going to be posting it on WhatsApp and everyone who just received the feedback and no Grace, please just react on the message or just tell me, um, just tell me the same comment that you put in here so that I can review why you didn't get any grade. That would be it. And for tomorrow's resubmission, you will, again, I'm highlighting this, you will find somewhere under the submission, you will find um, you know, a tab called day five, ideas to change the world resubmission. That's where you're going to be resubmitting your work. Make sure it's in PPT, make sure you adhere to all comments you received, like make sure that you get 100% this time. 
Okay. I'm posting it on Slack. I can see so many people saying they didn't get any grades. Um, yeah. So then you, you can give me the same comment on Slack so that I look into why that happened. Thank you so much, Ramit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I guess the recording can stop now. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And have a great work. Try to submit as much as you can, okay? Good night. Uh, you can stop the recording, Abdullahi. <laughs>